Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Nayak. Since I'm in the media, I think this is a very relevant question which at times has come across our mind. I'm the editor of a trade journal in Dubai. This is pertaining to actually the Al-Qaeda organization and Osama bin Laden. Uh, all of us know that when he was fighting the Russians, he was fighting communism. And what they did in Afghanistan, he was the hero of the masses. Now, many years down the line, this particular hero has turned into a monster. We're all aware of that. Now, my particular statement is this. Journalism is supposed to be objective. It is just supposed to see, uh, report what you see. You're not supposed to infer anything. You're not supposed to come to any conclusion while reporting. And here, the Western media, they created the rules, and they're breaking the rules. This is exactly what is happening, and the thrust of your lecture or for, or these, uh, during these two, three hours was exactly the same. They changed the rules and play with the rules. How can we, as... Muslims, as peace-loving Muslims, draw the attention of the world to this thing which is happening. Like, for example, let me give you something. All the ills of the world, all the violence is blamed on Al-Qaeda, and we have heads of state giving irresponsible statements like such and such a thing, it's by Al-Qaeda. How do you think, as peace-loving Muslims, we counteract something which we see as which is not... I'm again talking about the rules of journalism. There is inference, there is... Uh, opinion. Th these things should be separate, but they are being mixed in the news and being given to us. They are being dished out on a platter to, uh, for the world exactly to believe what they believe and that Islam is a terrorist religion. Do we have some certain hadith or do we have some guidelines to show us the road and to show us the path as the to what to do now? She asked a very good question. She is in the field of journalism and she said that previously Osama bin Laden when he fought with Russia, he was a hero and Osama bin Laden was created by the Americans and later on when he goes against the Americans he is called as a terrorist and as she rightly said in the rules of journalism they have to report objectively and they should not give the opinion the inference is supposed to be made by the readers not by the journalist this is a rule but rules are made to be broken in America Freedom of speech, freedom of speech. According to me, the least freedom of speech is in America. <laughs> freedom of speech, you can speak as long as it doesn't hurt them. If you don't speak against me, you can speak what you want. But if you speak against my interest, then maybe the CIA will catch you. So according to me, it's only a big fast. It's a hogwash. Freedom of speech. Regarding a question, how should we respond? regarding Osama bin Laden, is there any hadith, etc. And I was asked this question in Australia a couple of years back. Consul General of USA to Perth asked me the first question. I gave a talk on terrorism and jihad. He asked me, Brother Zakir, do you agree Osama bin Laden is a terrorist? He asked me. First question. So I told to the Consul General, as far as Osama bin Laden is concerned, I haven't met him. I don't know him. I'm neither his friend, neither am I his enemy. I don't know. I cannot base my judgment on what I see on the news channels, on BBC, CNN. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Hujurat, chapter number 49, verse number 6, that whenever you get information, check it up before you pass it on to the third person. So what they show on the media, on CNN and BBC, I cannot base my judgment on what I see on CNN and BBC because I know it is manipulated. Unless it's confirmed what they show is the truth. And when Yohan Redley, when she came from Afghanistan, she was asked, what is the opinion about Al-Qaeda? You know what she said? I doubt whether Al-Qaeda exists. <laughs> so, if you are going to base on what they show about Osama bin Laden and CNN and BBC, I cannot give my judgment. Allah Allah, what is he? But CNN, which is controlled by America, I come to know from there that they have killed thousands of Afghanis. They have attacked Iraq from their very channel. If the person owns the channel, what he shows, and is proud of it, it's confirmed what they have done is there. So if you ask me, who is terrorist number one, according to me, it is George Bush. This I have mentioned and came as headline in the statement that Dr. Zakir Naik says he's a fundamentalist and he calls George Bush as terrorist number one. Headlines in the papers of Australia. 
Do you know there was a survey done recently? Recently there was a survey done in the news of Chicago. They did a survey and they gave names of three people. Three people. Number one, Osama bin Laden. Number two, Saddam Hussein. Number three, George Bush. And they did a survey in different countries, different cities, different states. That who do you consider, among Muslims and non-Muslims together, even non-Muslims, who do you consider terrorist number one? The answer was the same. The answer was common. It was George Bush. The lowest percentage was 74%. 74% of the people said George Bush was number one. And the highest was 78% said that George Bush, according to them, was terrorist number one. Not me. Fine. Maybe I was the, one of the few people who was vocal. People normally get scared to speak. Regarding the hadith. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if you see something wrong, stop it with your hand. If you cannot stop it with the hand, stop it with your tongue. If you cannot stop it with the tongue, the least you can do is curse in your heart. And then you will be the lowest level of mumin. So I am very vocal. I speak the truth. Those people who Allah has given the power to stop with the hand, if they don't stop, Allah will question them. At least Allah has given me the power to speak. So I'm speaking at least. I've said the same thing in UK, in front of the chief of the police, in front of the mayor. I've said in USA, I've said in Australia, I've said in Malaysia. But I said with hikmah. With hikmah. With hikmah I said. So if Allah has given the power to speak, if I try and say, oh, I don't, Allah will take away this power. Allah will take away the power of mind to speak. The least you can do is curse in your heart. And today the non-Muslims are saying, leave aside Zak and Naik, the majority of the non-Muslims today, according to a survey done by University of Chicago in USA, they say that George Bush is number one. And if you go on the internet, there are statements, I'm not saying right or wrong, they say that what happened on 11th of September, it was an inside job. Some of the theories say that George Bush did it himself. <laughs> Regarding a question, how should the Muslims behave? See what happened after 7th of July in London. There was a bomb blast. All the Muslim, most of the Muslim scholars in USA, they got together and they condemned it. In UK, they did the same. I wouldn't like to name them, I know many of them. They condemned what happened on 11th September in New York is haram, it is wrong, we condemn it. What happened on 7th of July in London, more than 50 people died. On 11th September, more than 3,000 people died, we condemn it. Full stop. See what they said is right, I don't disagree. Quran clearly says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, if anyone kills any other human being, unless it be for murder, or for creating mischief in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. I also too condemn, if more than 3,000 innocent people have died in the World Trade Center on the 11th of September, it has to be condemned. If more than 50 innocent people died in London, it has to be condemned. But don't put a full stop. I also condemn that thousands of people that have died in Afghanistan have to be condemned. The thousands of people that died in Iraq have to be condemned. The thousands of people that have been butchered in Bosnia have to be condemned. The people that have been killed in the land of Palestine have to be condemned. Why are we afraid? <laughs> but when I ask the American, he tells me, no, you know America is a different. If we speak too much, we'll have problems. I said, why? America is a country of freedom of speech. What are you afraid of? <laughs> I speak in India. People who know Bombay, the situation of Bombay is very bad. At least in America and London, you can speak and get through. You know, people say that, Zahakir, don't you get death threats? This is part and parcel of my profession. It's part and parcel of my profession. Didn't the prophets get death threats? We are following in the footsteps of the prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to protect us. But speak the truth, but speak with hikmah. So if we have to speak, if we condemn, we condemn killing innocent people is wrong. We agree that what happened when more than 3,000 people on 11th September was killed is wrong. We condemn what happened in London is wrong. But we also condemn the other atrocities done. When a person straps a bomb and blows himself up and kills 20, 30 innocent people, he is called as a terrorist. But when a person throws a bomb from a plane 
and kills thousands of Afghanis, he is called as the brave American soldier. What bravery is it? In Hindi, we say chudiya pe nahi What bravery is it? From top, you are putting bombs. That also it blows into another 50 bombs. So we should know that Islam is a religion of truth. And I start my talk and I end the answer of this also with the same quotation of Surah Isra chapter 17 verse number 81 which says وَقُلْ جَعَ الْحَقَّ وَذَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ قَانَ الزَّوْكَ When truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. Thank you, Lord, sir.